Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part time musician who wants to go full time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. On the Profitable Musician Show, we give you practical tips and strategies to increase the income you're already making and tap into new streams so you can create more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. We also help you think like a business owner so you can keep more of the money that you make. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, author of the best-selling book, The Musician's Profit Path, and host of the popular Profitable Musician Summit. And as you can probably tell, I am obsessed with helping musicians like you to build a rock solid fan base and income foundation so you can fund the music you are driven to create, share your message with the world, and fulfill your God-given purpose as a musician without stressing out about where your next dollar is gonna come from. You've got the talent. You just need the marketing and business tools to take it to the next level. Now let's dive in to the Profitable Musician Show. I am here today with Katie Zaccardi, and I'm excited to talk about Patreon. This is something that comes up a lot with my students. And, you know, everyone, it's like this buzzword around, like everyone thinks they should have a Patreon, but they don't really understand what is involved with it. And so they're like always feeling this like FOMO, like I should be doing a Patreon, but I don't really know what is involved. So I wanted to bring Katie on because she does teach about how to launch your Patreon and how to do it the right way. So I want to make sure that you guys have the tools to be doing this the right way the first time, because I can tell you from working with students that have started a Patreon, but maybe you've only, they've only gotten like three or four people in their Patreon. Then the Patreon is just a total stress because they've made all these promises and then they have to deliver them to like four people where they're making a very small amount of income. And then it becomes like this resentful situation. So let's get into how to really be able to launch your Patreon in a way that's going to make you happy income wise and make you happy in a way where you and your fans are like doing this together. So before we do that, I've had Katie on the podcast before, but I just want her to give you a little intro about, you know, what she teaches and, you know, her musical background and all that. And then we'll start talking about Patreon. Yes. Well, thank you, Brie, for having me on again. So the short story of who I am and how I got here, I've been a musician my whole life, studied music business at NYU where I also did like a trillion internships, tried to figure out what I wanted to do in the industry, came out of college knowing knowing that I really wanted to start my own business but didn't have an idea of what to do. So I ended up working in music publishing while also helping to grow the nonprofit Woman Crush Music. So I kind of got my hand in the corporate side and the more entrepreneurial side at the same time. And then f- fast forward, I ended up quitting my jobs and <laughs> becoming a, because <laughs> I had like a lot of jobs <laughs> at that point, including working full time and being an artist. And I started a coaching business. And when I started coaching, I was really focused on wellness for musicians. Although the truth was that even though that was a focus in my private client calls, we always did strategy work, whether it was, you know, release planning or Patreon planning or anything like that. Uh, a lot of my clients at the time also had coaching business or we're starting coaching businesses or teaching businesses and it really became an all-encompassing coaching session so I decided to make the official pivot um, about six months ago a year ago and really focus on strategy and I still take a very holistic approach and I'm very mindful of wellness and mindset in my strategy coaching but now my mission really is to help women in music grow their multifaceted music businesses, whether they are musicians, coaches, or teachers, or maybe a little bit of all three, um, and help them get wealthy. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, I, I think, you know, you've made a pivot, but in a way you haven't, because of course, the, you know, the, the wellness and the just the self care and all that, like that needs to be a part of everything we do. And, and like what I said in the beginning about your Patreon, you don't want it to be 
this stressor, like this albatross around your neck. Exactly. You created, right. Yeah. And now it's, it's stressing you out and making you feel annoyed. So that's part of keeping ourselves, you know, well balanced as artists and all that. So before we get into like the strategy of how to do this right, I want you to kind of go over what are the common mistakes that artists make just so people that are, are listening or watching, you know, can feel like, okay, I'm not the only one that did this <laughs> when yeah. I started my Patreon. Yeah. So biggest overall mistake is that people think that launching a Patreon is this quick and simple thing. Like, oh, I'm going to come up with the idea. I'm going to decide I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to go ahead and announce it to the world, you know, plus the step of just setting it up, announce it to the world, and then I'm done. Biggest mistake right off the bat is that is not true. It is a longer process. So once we start to look at that longer process, there's kind of a couple mistakes that come up throughout. So one of the first ones is in the creation process of the Patreon. I see a lot of musicians coming up with the ideas, the perks, the deliverables uh, on their end and not actually taking the time to validate the offer with their audience and asking their audience what they want. So then when they go to launch it and sell it, they don't get the results and they're wondering why. So moving on kind of from the next stage after the offer creation is sort of the launch and the pre-launch, the biggest mistake I see there is really not doing a pre-launch and not taking the time to warm up their audience. So maybe they even validated the idea and they asked their audience what they wanted, but then they just, again, pushed it out there without taking time to ramp up to the launch and to the announcement and get their audience ready to actually opt in and buy. And then there is a lot of mistakes mistakes we can talk about selling, <laughs> but genuinely, or generally speaking, I see a lot of musicians who kind of, and this is something that I'm sure you've seen in the music industry a ton. Sorry that my dogs are barking very loudly right now, <laughs> but I'm sure you see this a ton too, Brie, of artists who kind of like slide into the DMs of people that they've rarely talked to and and kind of being like, listen to my music or buy my thing. And it's just this like really sleazy, gross sales strategy that's not based on connection. And that is ugh, that, like, oh you don't gosh. want to go through I this was... whole launch process and then do that. <laughs> like, I was just doing an interview with someone about it, using Instagram for, you know, promoting your music. And we were talking about the same thing about like how I get all these DMs all the time of like, Hey, check out my track, share it with you. You know, like, why would I do that? I don't, first of all, I don't really know who you are. I know. You know? And ugh, so yeah, bad. like, why would I do that? I could talk about that for hours on end. <laughs> like every day I could wake up and talk about that because for some reason it just never stops. And even if it's not as like as bad as someone being like, literally cold DMing a bunch of random people like, listen to my Spotify. But there is still versions that are better, but still bad of people that you haven't talked to at all, or even just talked to recently that you're reaching out to with a big ask from them. Like you can't mm -hmm. expect someone to do something for you, let alone pay for something if you don't have a relationship with them. And if they don't have any reason to buy that thing, that's going to serve them. Like that's actually... You, let me add a, a mistake here. And one of the probably bigger ones is the initial approach of the Patreon, which is that all uh, a lot of artists come at it thinking this is for me and this is a way for me to make money. And this is a way for me to do this. But the truth is that if you take that approach, especially when it comes to sales, your audience is not going to vibe with it. They need to know what's in it for them, how it serves them and why they would want to join. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this is the same lesson about anything that you're launching. And you guys have probably, if you've listened to this or watched this show, you've heard me talking about this in relation to releases, you know, same thing, right? You can't just all of a sudden come out with a single and expect people to like jump on board and start sharing it with everyone and talking about how awesome it is when you haven't done anything with them in the previous three months, you know? So it's, it's really the same thing of, just knowing that like launching is a long game and whatever it is you're launching. And as an artist, you're going to want to launch lots of things. You're going to want to, you know, maybe you're going to do, uh, you know, you're going to start teaching voice or instruments or something. You're going to, yeah. um, you know, do a big like release party or a concert or something. Like there's always something you're going to want to launch. 
And you can't just have your engagement with your fans go up and down and up and down, only up on the launches. You know, you've got to yes. have like this even and then like these little hills when you're launching, but not these like wild, you know, data yeah. points buy my thing and then I'm disappearing forever. Right. Like nobody wants to buy your thing if they haven't actually spent months and months engaging with you and really enjoying what you have to offer for free. Yeah. I mean, like seriously, you guys, I've been in business doing this for six years and there are some people that have been following me for four or five years and then they join my academy or then they buy my course. You know what I mean? You can't just assume that they're just going to be jumping on it right away. Yeah. So I, that's, that's such a good point. Um, so let's talk about, so those are the things that we don't want you to do wrong. If you've done those in the past, like you can always do like a relaunch of your, of Patreon and like do it correctly this time. Totally. Um, so what, what's kind of the game plan, like at a high level that you give people when you're teaching? I know you recently did a challenge um, about launching or relaunching your Patreon. What's kind of the high level that you give them? Yeah. So first of all, such a good point that even if you have a Patreon already, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh no, I do not have the results that I want. I have four people. And listen, if four people's your goal, we're not judging, but if four people makes you feel like you're doing a lot of work for nothing, then that's a problem, right? We don't want you to be feeling like you're like slaving over your Patreon to make $10 a month. That's not really worth your time and energy exchange. So whether you're thinking about launching a Patreon or you've actually launched one already and it just didn't go well, or you simply want to give it another push, this is going to be relevant for you because when it comes to launching, yes, with Patreon, the, the first announcement is a really important one, but it's not the only one. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're done for. So looking at it at a very like high level, we have three phases of the launch. The first phase is offer creation. The second phase is the pre-launch and prep audience warm-up phase. And then the third phase is the actual launch phase. So if you'll notice, just like I said earlier, a lot of people think, oh, I'll just create the offer and then put it out there. Or when I say launch, they're thinking, oh, it's just about really like doing the work and promoting it and selling. But the reality is there are two really important phases that come before the actual work of launching. So in that offer creation phase, um, it, luckily with Patreon, it, it's relatively simple because you're working within the structures of that program and you're kind of just figuring out like, what are your perks, your tiers? Um, in my program out to launch, we talk about, you know, how to figure that out, how to make sure that your tiers are priced appropriately and that the perks that you're offering are something that your audience wants. Like I sort of alluded to earlier, market research is a really important part of this step that a lot of artists skip over because I don't know, I just don't think market research is something that we talk about often in music, especially when it comes to creating music. It's you know like, what I think it is? I think yeah. it's that we like, as musicians, like we wanna be polished. We wanna get in front of our audience and be like, this is what I have. Yeah, and and like be. we feel uncomfortable like asking for their input. At least that's what I've seen, and I've seen that like tendency in musicians of like I want to present myself as like all put together. And if I ask them what they want, that means I haven't like thought it through and come up with like the perfect thing. That totally makes sense, and I can <laughs> definitely talk to that. And I think that what I, what could also go along with that is the idea that if you've only up until this point really created music, you're not necessarily going to be asking feedback from your audience around like, how do you like this? Oh lyric? my gosh, that's oh, such a good heart. point. Or like your audience is not going to tell you like, that's a good melody. Yeah, or, exactly. <laughs> you know, you'll get their input later, but they're not going to be coming in on the middle of the process usually. Exactly, exactly. So for Patreon, it makes sense that if you were using that same model that you would just be like, okay, I'm going to create it and I'm going to put it out there. And then if they don't like it, then I'll take it back and then I'll redo it or whatever. But you don't have to do that. And there's also no shame or no unprofessionalism by doing your market research up front. It is important how you go about it. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can do that, whether it's more casual on Instagram or what I recommend is actually getting on some calls with fans or, you know, like potential clients if you're maybe even like a coach who's running a Patreon or a program. But the market research phase is one that you don't want to skip. And I know that most people do skip it because they either don't know they should or it just feels really uncomfortable. And so they like pretend and talk themselves out of it that they don't need it. But 
a lot of your problems, if your Patreon is not selling, is probably coming from the fact that your audience doesn't resonate with the content that is in it, or they don't want it, or they don't think they want it, or they don't think they need it, or they don't see what they're gonna get from it. Um, and the other thing is that market research actually provides a lot of valuable insight into how you're, how you can write good sales copy and write good educational posts for your audience by finding out what do they want? What are they, what words do they use? You know, what, what are they struggling with or what are their desires and why do they like your music or like your platform? You know, what are the themes that go beyond just the music and the sound that really, really resonates with them and hits home? And that's not just necessary for creating your offer. We can definitely talk about like, I make fun of kind of like the basic Patreon offer that's like, you get a live stream and you get a welcome note. Like nobody really wants that, you know? <laughs> but right. it's also important for your content because if you can literally use their words in your content, they're going to know you're speaking to them and they're going to be much more likely to listen. It, it could. The thing is that I've heard from some people, like it ends up sometimes when they do the market research, it's something like so unexpected and simple that they want like i want a shout out on instagram stories once a month from from you you know like something like that that you would never think of that would be valuable they think is valuable yeah so that's where it's like super useful i also think that the market research can be a little uncomfortable if you've kind of gotten in that headspace of having this invisible wall between you and your audience i know i talk about this in some of my welcome emails when people join my email list, because I got into this early on where I was like, I'm up on the stage, they're down there, you know, and like, you don't, you don't mean to think that way, but sometimes you're like, well, why would I converse with them on like a regular level? Because I'm the performer and they're the fan. And we just need to get out of that headspace. Like yeah. we need, there are people, we are people, you know? Totally. And that's very like egoic <laughs> uh -huh. and it's terrible to realize you're doing it because sometimes it's totally subconscious yeah and and i i get it like you want to be the rock star you want to be mm -hmm. the person who people are looking up to and you want to have in some ways you do want to create a sense of authority where people do see you as the authority again whether that's like you're the coach authority or you're the teacher who's an authority or you're the musician and people take you legit and see you as a serious musician. But that doesn't mean that you're not listening to your audience or mm -hmm. connecting with your audience as to what they really want from you. Yeah, if it's you a totally fine line. I just wanted yeah. to mention that because I know that that early on in my career, that was something that I got into and I was glad that I eventually realized I was doing that because yeah. <laughs> it can really turn people off. You know? Yeah. Or, you know, like, again, it's like one of the best reasons to do a Patreon is so that people who want to connect with you and support you have the opportunity to do so. But they're also going to want to do it in terms that work with them. And so, like you said, it is that fine line where it's like you want to give them the opportunity while keeping in integrity with any boundaries that you have. That's why it's, you know, you get to decide what your perks are. You get to decide what you're going to do based on the feedback of your audience and what just makes sense. But you're also allowing, again, a door in for your audience to get something out of it. And it's not just about like, pay me for this thing. Your audience wants to actually know that they're involved or they're in a community or they're getting something that they're really desiring. And you're also getting something out of it too, of course. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we talked about the market research and figuring out your offer. So what do we need to do in the pre-launch to, to really kind of build it up? Like, do you, do you actually talk about it in the pre-launch or do you get kind of mysterious? Totally. So the pre-launch really consists of two things, the outward pre-launch and the inward. So like behind the scenes, you're going to be doing the work to prep for your actual launch, you know, prepping the Patreon, making sure your content's on point, like doing all of that planning behind the scenes. And outwardly, you're going to be warming up your audience. So warming up your audience, what that really means is that, yes, you are sort of teasing them. So we might not, we're not going to hard pitch it like, here's a Patreon, it's open for enrollment, go join now. But you're going to be sharing with them that something's coming. You're going to be putting content out that really gets them intrigued and involved and wanting more and alluding to the fact. And like, yeah, you can definitely what I call breadcrumbing, like breadcrumb. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a term that a lot of coaches use 
where you might very well say like, hey, my Patreon is coming. Are you so excited? You know what I mean? Um, but it's not out yet. And so you're really getting them think of, thinking of it like this. You're getting them to a point where they're on the edge of their seat, like waiting to join. So they know it's coming. They know how this is going to benefit them. They they know, you know, why they want to join at this point. So then when you launch, they're already ready to opt in and you're not having to like convince them or do the work that should have been done during the pre-launch phase during your launch in terms of educating them as to what Patreon itself even is. Because keep in mind, some of your fans might not even know what Patreon itself is. And so during the warm-up phase, you're going to be educating them on things like that. And again, getting them... Depending on what your perks are, it's going to look different, but let's say your platform is very community-based or maybe you have a really strong message of mental health. You're going to be taking these themes and really implementing that into your content so that you can get your audience ready to join a community that's focused on mental health and healing through music or whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. And while we're there, like, do you actually recommend the Patreon platform itself for doing this? I know we've kind of just start using Patreon as like this general term for a way for fans to support you. Like, are there other platforms that you think are just as good? Or do you think Patreon is just like, it's designed for this, it's perfect for it, it's easy, just use it? That's a good question. You know, I do think that Patreon has a solid setup and some name recognition behind it right now. Um, I've had a few clients who have created their own platforms like their own membership sites, but you need a developer to do that. You need knowledge of <laughs> like computers or, or um, being able to manage that behind the scenes. And so I personally think that Patreon gets the job done. Like I don't have any complaints with it really. Um, I think that no, yes, your audience might not know what it is, but the truth is that even if you were doing a membership site, they're going to have to log into a platform anyway and get used to that platform regardless of what it is. So, you know, even if you have to take a little bit of time to warm them up to this platform itself. I I like Patreon. I think that it's pretty well organized. And uh, the other option that I would look into, like if you're able to get a web developer or you are one and you're savvy at that, you certainly could create your own platform that works for you. Or you could use a combination of things. Like I use Kajabi for my courses and I think that's a good way to have like a portal. Like if you wanted to have like a portal of videos and like a Facebook group or something like that, you definitely could, you know, make shift your own thing or like a Discord channel or a Slack channel that goes along with it. There's no rules saying that you have to stay within the Patreon platform. Um, I mean, even those things could be a perk of your Patreon <laughs> if you just wanted to host it. That's true. That's but, true. Yeah, I would say, yeah. I mean, you know, that being said, we do have our own Patreon um, to support our free group on Facebook and all that stuff. But um, just a shout out to like our friends at Banzoogle, like they've set it up. So if you have your website on Banzoogle, you can do like a subscription model and have like stuff that's behind a paywall and stuff. So that's another option too, which is great. Um, but it is, Patreon is like, it is actually made for that. Yes. Like, and it's got all the tiers and, and it's got like, what's cool about it is that in the background like you can send special emails messages to people that are at different levels so they get access to certain you know like for us like if you're at a certain level you get to submit music to women of substance for right. free and you know so we can give them access to that special dropbox and things like that yeah and so i think that in that sense it definitely keeps it organized for you but it like i said if you want to create your own organizational system or you prefer to work without the confines of patreon i totally get it i would say that like thinking about the money some people might uh not want to do patreon because they take a cut but you know if you have to build out your own platform that's gonna cost money too and even if you decide to go with like kajabi for hosting stuff or another platform for storing videos or whatever it's still going to cost you money, right? Totally. So yeah, it will. It's not and like that's a reason to leave in Patreon my Patreon is like an all-in-one solution, which is great. And it does have the ability for them to communicate with you in the background and all that stuff. And they take, I think, 10% or something, but it's totally worth it because yeah. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. You know, it's yeah. just send me a lump <laughs> of money once a month. So yeah. You know. And work it into your prices. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if that 10% is really freaking you out, bump your price up a little bit so that you can account for the cut. You know, it, 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 there's no one saying you can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. So we've set it up. We've like warmed people up. Now, what does the launch look like? 
Yeah, so the launch is going to be what you probably think of when I say launch. Just like you would when you're releasing music, you make the announcement, you do the thing, you give it a push, hopefully at least. I mean, if you're listening to Bree's podcast by now, you should know how to do this (laughs) for music. Now we're kind of just going to adapt it to Patreon and we're going to do that same push over a certain period of time um, so that, again, you're not just like endlessly going with an album, it can consi- can kind of feel that way. Like you should just be endlessly promoting it and you don't know when to end. Uh, when we're launching your Patreon or, or program, you're going to make sure that you pick a time frame during, depending on if it's your first launch or a relaunch, um, you can do different things. But I usually recommend for a launch period, adding some si- some kind of bonus or incentive that goes along with it so that people feel really compelled to oh, join. I was totally going to ask that. Like, is there a way to insert urgency in here? Yeah, so this is where it gets a little funky with Patreon because if you were talking about like a course, like you or I would launch a course, we might have a start and end date of enrollment, especially if it's like a group coaching or one-on-one, you know, you have to start at this point, it's live coaching, it doesn't go forever. But with a Patreon, I guess you could close it or keep it a secret, but most likely you're going to have it open so that people can join at any point. The thing, though, is that people need urgency to join. Mm -hmm. And if it's open forever and there's no, like, pressure, for lack of a better word, or no reason to join at a specific time, it leaves people to just, oh, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I'll do it next week. And then they never actually take action. So you want to compel people to take action. So having a specific time period where you are actively pushing it and within that time period adding some, like I said, bonuses or incentives is gonna be really helpful. So with Patreon, a couple things I have done with my clients before, um, one of my clients who actually she didn't, this was still a relaunch cause she had done a push before we worked together and I don't even know if there was, I think maybe there were a couple people in there like her parents and one other person or something. Yeah. So we kind of treated it like it was a new launch, but totally. we did like a founding members discount where a certain number of people who are the founding members can get in and lock it in at a lower price for her top two tiers. So it was like 50% off her top two tiers for like 10 people only. So that gave people incentive to join uh, at that bonus uh, or at that discounted price. And then I also think an effective thing to do is like adding a bonus, like a special concert or, you know, special giveaway or something really unique that you can offer to people who join during that specific timeframe to incentivize people to do it. I've also like chatted with clients and I have a couple clients who have launches coming up that they're going to be integrating with releases, either a music video release or like a single release and kind of using that as an extra push for um, giving their audience incentive of extra behind the scenes for that or a kickoff party or like a listening party that only these people get. And so it's thinking about what's the broader picture of your business that's going on Or, you know, if it is just really focused on the Patreon, what is something within that platform uh, and within your scope that you can give as a really unique bonus that's going to incentivize people to act during this time frame? Yeah, I love that. And I mean, we're both course creators. I feel like, you know, now we're trying to teach musicians to think like course creators because we've been launching, you know, like this for a while now. Um, And with releases, with Patreon, like all that, it's really this like launch mindset of you've got to get people excited you you launch it you you have a deadline of some kind and it's just a great it's just not something that musicians are necessarily like do naturally they haven't been studying this stuff like we have yeah so i think that you're teaching it (laughs) yes i know so i think it's great how you walk them through the whole process yeah so is there anything we else we haven't covered with the patreon process like is is there anything i know one thing is like down the road when you're doing patreon you do have to pay attention to people that kind of fall off like they don't pay and stuff like that you need to be there's like administrative stuff that goes on yeah i mean once so once your patreon's active and launched and continuing to grow um you obviously want to make sure yeah that you're keeping a pulse on your audience as you go and if somebody is not um if somebody's not paying or somebody's being disruptive or if your community is maybe just losing steam, that's a point where you're going to want to, you're going to want to go in and actively maybe do another round of market research or maybe add an incentive for your patrons. And, uh, you know, if it's a billing issue, that's something you want to make sure you have set up within your team to just 
mm-hmm. follow up and reach out and reach out and also have a really strong policy up front of like, you know, if you don't pay, you get kicked out. You can't stay in without paying. Um, but if you're feeling like you're just kind of like losing steam or you want to reinvigorate it, you can repeat this strategy that I teach inside of my program out to launch and that we've kind of gone over briefly here endlessly. Like you don't want to do it every two weeks, but you can take you know, two or four, even a couple more than that, depending on how you spread it out, periods throughout the year, every, you know, once every quarter or so to like do a hard launch of your Patreon to get another wave of people in. And you might have people join here and there, but that's going to also help to like really keep your audience hyped up and adding new people, adding new things, um, and just re-energizing it should be really helpful. Yeah, I think it's really important to kind of look at some kind of a promotional calendar throughout the year for your music. And like you said, put that in maybe once a quarter and the same thing with like, okay, I'm going to mix this in with like, maybe I'm going to release a single once a quarter or whatever and have different focuses. So you know what you're promoting when, and you're not just like scrambling, (laughs) you know, like, oh, I I need to launch this again. You know, my membership is going down in my Patreon. Yeah. And listen, the reason that people make these mistakes in the first place usually comes down to scarcity and it's either scarcity of time or scarcity of money. And if it's scarcity of time, it's usually scarcity of time because it's scarcity of money, Mm -hmm. because people want to get money and they want to get it fast. And they look at their Patreon or they look at their bank account and they say, I feel broke. Now I have to rush push this out here and make it work and make it happen. And guess what? It doesn't work that way. If you force yourself to do something super quickly, that does not mean it's going to be successful. And I see artists wasting, we know time is money. I see artists all the time wasting money by wasting time trying to figure it out by themselves or trying to rush something out in order to get a quick buck and then not actually getting it, having to go back and figure out what they did wrong and redo the whole process in order to get results. Also, I think if you're approaching it with that scarcity mindset, you're just kind of like amplifying that out, like not realizing it, but like it's clear you're not like attracting people. You're like just, uh, you know, giving off this vibe of, oh my gosh, I need this now, you know? And it goes, you know, it's very much like I said at the beginning, like, I need you to support me for my music. How many times, like, I can guarantee every single person listening to this podcast at some point has seen a post from a fellow musician saying, I would love for you to support me and my music career. That does not work. Like usually when people say that it's not even come, it's not necessarily coming from a, an energy of scarcity, but people will perceive it that way. And people don't necessarily have, like, I want to believe everyone has a good heart, but everyone also wants to do what they want to do with their bank account and with their money. And they might want to support you, but that might not be enough of a reason for them to put money in it. And so you need to not only give them a reason, but also make sure that you're not coming from a place of desperation and push push and forcing it because that's just not going to work. Yeah. I mean, I, I really have, I really believe that success is attractive. And, and so if you, you know, you come at it from like, you know, what you're going to give them, like what you're, you're so excited about all these benefits that you can't wait to share with your community. And if you come at it with that in that way and talk about like the people in your community that have already benefited from that. And totally, that's the, really the way to attract people, not the, like, I need you to support me vibe. Yeah. Times are hard. Please support musicians. Right. Like We know times are hard. We know that musicians need support, but that's just not enough. I know it sounds really harsh and like, you're probably like, dang, she's mean, but I'm, it's just the brutally honest truth that you need to know if you want to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad that we talked about that because I know you're like super big on mindset and everything and and we're both on the same page about that. So I'm glad we brought this up. Yeah. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for like giving us this whole like blueprint. Obviously it's very high level. And, you know, if you work with Katie, you're going to get that hand holding that you really need to actually do it, which is the key, <laughs> right? It's always the, like, I get the strategy, but then how do I make sure I actually do it? Yes. That implementation and accountability is a huge missing piece. Like there's a lot of free info out there but that's not getting you the results that you're desiring. Like at this point, it's about like taking action and being held accountable for it. 
Absolutely. So if they want more of that, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, especially I know you're active on Instagram. Yes. So you can definitely catch me on Instagram at Katie Zaccardi. Um, shoot me a DM if you listen to this episode and let's chat. Um, so right now, as we're recording this episode, I am launching my program out to launch, which walks you through launching a program. The whole process we just talked about with hands-on support, strategy, and everything that you need to have a sold out launch. I don't know if it's still going to be open for enrollment by the time this goes out, but you can definitely DM me and ask me about it anyway, because worst comes to worst, we'll get you on the wait list for next time. But those are the two big things going on. You can always head to my website, katiezacardi.com for more information. And my podcast is the Out to Be podcast, which we have episodes each week. Yeah, if you're listening to this, you're a podcast listener. So definitely go and check out that podcast. It's yes. fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. I appreciate all of your knowledge and experience that you shared with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Bree. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.